I don't want you to just work in the spec testing environment. I also want you to be able to see the website from the browser. So let's go to, to the browser and look at that web page that uh, we did. So we need to start up our Rails server, Rails S for server. And once that starts, we can actually go to our web page here, our localhost 3000 slash users, and you are on the index page, which completely matches our, our view right here. And, and so we're getting the same um, page through our web browser that our spec is, is getting in its testing format. Uh, let's go ahead and edit our page a little bit. If you remember our tests, the, one of the things is we want to see list of users. So that's easy to change. Let's go ahead and change this to say list of users rather than you're on that page. And that ends our, our header. And we can run our test now. And when we do this now, we don't think that any of the other tests should pass, but that first test that says we want to find a list of users should now pass. And it does, very simply. Uh, these next two are going to take a little bit more work. Uh, but let's, let's conquer this one right here. Uh, we need to know how many users there are. So let's go ahead and uh, now we, we need to be able to get our, our users. And so we need to first go to our controller because it's our controller that's going to get that list of users. And what we're going to do is we're going to stick that into an instance variable. Let's just call it users. And if you remember from our test, the way that we get all our users is user.all. Now the way Rails works, and I'm not exactly a big fan of this, but this is the way it works, is any value that's stored in an instance variable for a controller gets sent to the views and can be accessed as an instance variable in, in those views as, all, as well. So because we're storing user.all in this instance variable, if we save this and go back and edit our view, we now can access at users. And uh, not quite like this, but we, ha we have access to at users. So what we want to do is be able to know how many users there are. So we can do at users.count will we'll give us that many. And then we want to have some fixed text. So we need a way to tell Ruby or Rails that this is code and not text that we want to see appear. And the way we do this is with a, a pseudo element that looks like percent equals. And what that does is that runs the code inside of, of here at users.count and turns that into text and prints out that text I instead. So at users.count uh, users and let's put this inside of a paragraph tag here. So now we know that we have this many users. Uh, let, let's see that in the web browser real quick. So I'm going to restart our server. And I, once that gets started, I can go ahead and refresh this page. And we can see that right now, in my development environment, I have two users. But we need to see those. Um, we don't see those yet. But this should now pass our next test because our next test is, is um, going to say I created 25 users in the database. Does it show 25 users? And it does. So now we're down to this last test right here where we want to show all the users in 
our page. So let's go back up to here and since it's in a list item let's go ahead and make it I don't know an ordered list uh, I suppose it could be an unordered list but uh, what we want here now is to iterate through all of our users and now I'm gonna give a slightly different uh, pseudo element and that is the still the greater than or less than percent but I'm not gonna put the equal sign here because in this case I don't want the code that I'm running to generate any output because what I want to do is I want to go to at users dot each and and I want to iterate through each of those but I don't want whatever output that Rails might think of here as becoming output for my web page that doesn't make any sense and so I don't put the equal sign here uh, like I did right here like I did right here so I'm still running Ruby code but I'm ignoring any output that it might generate and so a corresponding end for that do right there and now what I want is I want a list item and in that list item I want that users name so notice I'm, I'm escaping here back to Ruby and I'm using this variable right in here and I'm gonna put just a hard-coded colon in here and then I'm gonna go back to that user dot email because we know we need both of those and then I can end that list item alright so if we save that and run our server we can go ahead and and see what that looks like on on the web page and we've got John Doe and Jane Doe with their emails that's exactly what we want we can go ahead now and run our tests and we should pass our tests because we are displaying list of users we're displaying how many users there are and in a list item we're showing all those users names and emails and so now we have successfully passed our test. We are now from red to green.